Nice to see you. This is Sandy McDonald. Here you are. I do, Mr. President. Saw you last year. Yes, good to see you again. And Ben Love, Chief Executive Council. We've got uh, some presentations to make to you, Mr. President, uh, on behalf of the Report to the Nation delegation of the Boy Scouts of America. And we'd like to start out with this young man here, who is Roberto Guardo, and he is the Cub Scout Youth Representative. Oh. And he's from Fort Worth, Texas. Mr. President, I'm honored to present you with your 1986 registration card. We are very pleased that you are continuing to serve as the honorary president of the Boy Scouts of America. Thank you very much. I am very honored to serve in that capacity. And next, we have uh, very much. Bill Kuhl, who is an Eagle Scout, and he comes from uh, where? Miami. Miami, right. Mr. President, this report covers the highlights and accomplishments of the Boy Scouts of America for 1985. And we're also proud to report that for the sixth consecutive year, this movement has increased in membership and service to the youth of this nation. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Next, we have David Erb. He's a, also an Eagle Scout. And he happens to be the head of the Order of the Era, Mr. President. That's 160,000 uh, Honor Scout campers. And uh, he has a presentation for you. Late edition of the Boy Scout Handbook. Oh, now I can get lost in the woods. And <laughs> <laughs> well, well, next up, uh, so we have David Lohmeyer. He's an Eagle Scout. He's on our executive board. And uh, he has a presentation of the history of 75 years of Scout. Let me have the Boy Scouts first. Well, thank you very thank much. You. I'm pleased to have this. And next is another Eagle Scout, uh, David Barnhart. He is a distinguished scholar, and he uh, was on the expedition to the uh, Antarctica. And he has well, a special propel pin for you. Well, you got warmed up now? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Pleased to have this propel pin. And the next presentation is from three young people. Come on in. This is Gregory Kuntz. Gregory. Oh, this is Danielle Willette. Hello. This is Ernest Bichette. And these three young people were voted uh, outstanding leaders in 1985 by the Boy Scouts of America. Well, congratulations. And they have a presentation to give you a, a silver crystal, a crystal obelisk, which uh, commemorates the dedication that we all have to serving youth through the Boy Scouts of America. Well, thank you very much. Please answer. And Mr. President, uh, I'd like to say just a few words. The uh, Benjamin Franklin uh, once said, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. Mm -hmm. And the best thing that we can do is to teach our young to be virtuous. And throughout most of our history, these values of Benjamin Franklin were passed down from father to son, generation after generation in our home, our school, and our religious institution, each one of them reinforcing and undergirding the others. We had a uh, consensus in this nation, not only on values, but on the importance of those values. And from that consensus, we knew who we were as a people and where we were going as a nation. And somehow, much of that has changed here lately. Far too many of our homes, our schools, and our religious institutions have fallen down on that traditional role of being promoters and protectors of our freedom, our basic American heritage. Far too many young people, really, are growing up with almost no exposure to the values that made our, our country great. In about uh, 1800, there was a Professor Teitler that made this prophetic statement. He said all of the great civilizations lasted only about 200 years, and they went through this kind of a cycle. They started out in bondage. They developed great spiritual faith. From their faith, they developed great courage. From their courage, they won their freedom. When they freedom, they got great abundance. But then they developed selfishness, complacency, apathy, dependency, and then back into bondage again. And it's interesting to speculate about where we are in that cycle when you consider special interest groups that are putting their own special interests ahead of the nation. nation. Consider uh, apathy, the number of people that don't turn out the polls to, to vote. And you consider uh, dependency. 
in which far too many of the people in this nation have thrown out that great American value of self-reliance and have their hands out for entitlements from the, from the U.S. government. And he went on to say that a democracy cannot survive as a permanent form of government. It'll only survive until its people discover that they can vote themselves largest on the public treasury, and from then on, the majority will vote for the candidates that promise them the most benefits from the public treasury, with the result that a democracy collapses from fiscal irresponsibility, always followed by dictatorship. Now, haven't we done a super job of voting ourselves entitlements in this country? Yes. When we over almost one half of our federal budget was uh, entitlements. And I, I'd just like to say this, Mr. President, that if you were to go on nationwide television and appeal to those retirees who really didn't need their Social Security and offered them the proper kind of recognition for giving up voluntarily their Social Security, I bet you'd be amazed at how many people would rise to the occasion <laughs> and be willing to be counted as a modern-day patriot who believes in self-reliance. So we have a, a nation that has gotten too selfish, uh, where there's no trust in almost anything. They don't live by the values on which our nation was founded. And we have the answer. You just have to have the answer. And that is <laughs> the Boy Scouts of America for the last 76 years have unswervingly kept to their course of instilling the values of our American heritage in the hearts and the minds of the young people of this nation. And if these values are once again to become a major part of our American way of life, we need your help, Mr. President. We need your help to ensure that when these young people in scouting join the adult world, that their values are reinforced, not torn down. And we need your help, Mr. President, to give us leadership so that honor, duty, service, loyalty, hard work, self-reliance, and above all, honesty and trust are once again taught in our homes, taught and practiced in our homes, our schools, our universities, our religious institutions, our businesses, and in our government. And we need that kind of a leadership, Mr. President, which you alone can give to meet that high and lofty objective. And uh, I had a discussion last month with uh, George Bush on this subject, and I have a little follow-up letter I'd like to leave with you, some ideas that I had in mind that might be helpful. But in, in closing, <laughs> in closing, we want you to know that the Boy Scouts of America are dedicated and committed to the values of our American heritage upon which this nation was founded. And we want to close our, our meeting with you here today by reciting to you the Scout Oath and Law, and I'm going to lead them in that. On my honor, on my honor. I will do my best. I will, I will do, do my best. best. To do my duty. To do my duty. To God and my country. To God and my country. And obey the Scout Law. And to obey the Scout Law. To help other people at all times. To help other people at all times. To keep myself physically strong. To keep, keep myself physically strong. Mentally awake. Mentally awake. And morally straight. And morally straight. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful. Friendly, courteous, kind. Friendly, courteous, kind. Obedient, cheerful, thrifty. Obedient, cheerful, thrifty. Brave, clean, and reverent. Brave, clean, and reverent. Mr. President, we of the Boy Scouts of America, on our honor, will do our part in what we hope will be your great American crusade. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you, and let me just say, I've known, of course, that helping others is a very great principle of, of the Scouts. And I would like to say that I think there's great evidence that that sleeping giant out there, this country of ours, uh, it hasn't forgotten all the great values. Uh, maybe dependency on the government led too many people away from that. But they're coming back, and last year, the total contributions in our country to worthy causes, $74 billion of voluntary giving. And what you're doing, I know, and the thing about helping others is, is a great part of this and most valuable. And I can answer your request by telling you that, yes, I'll do everything I can to help um, ensure that that great American spirit of generosity and volunteerism 
is kept alive. In the connection with that, I know that it has been traditional that now and then a president could make a request of the Boy Scouts. And I have a request. Just one subject that has not treated too often the, uh, publicly or officially, but that I think is a great need. And so I'm going to ask if in this coming year, if the, or in this year that is before us, if the Boy Scouts can take on this task. I think you must have all read or heard of the young lad out in California who knew he was facing death and who pledged his heart to his girlfriend, a 14-year-old girl, who also had to die if she did not get a heart transplant. She now is living with his heart. And if the Boy Scouts could do anything to enhance the awareness of our people in becoming donors, now, this usually is something that takes place when people pass on, but there is a great need for tissue, for uh, organs that can be transplanted, for corneas from eyes that the deceased no longer need. And if you could enhance, I'm asking you to do what you can to enhance interest in and the knowledge of the way people can arrange them, that they will add to those organs that are so vital to the life of them of some who cannot live without them. And uh, that would be my request of you. Mr. President, we, uh, on behalf of the Boy Scouts of America, we accept that uh, challenge with pleasure and enthusiasm. All right, thank you all. We're going to have a group photo here with the Scouts for oh. the uh, press co-op. Right. Mm -hmm. It must be roughly around the middle of the year. That's another <clears throat> Our chief scout executive's father voluntarily refused to accept any social security throughout his life. And you, you know, it, if only 10% of the people responded to that, you'd say $19 billion a year. And I really think it would happen. There are people. There are people out there who are beyond any need at all, but who don't understand that they could do this. I have heard of many wealthy people out on a golf course and say, "This is silly. You know, I, if this check comes to me, and, uh, and I'm sure they give it to some worthy cause or something, but they don't. It's never occurred to them that they could <laughs> say, don't take it.'" You're the reason why they can do that, Mr. Well, President. You make that appeal, and I guarantee you, they'll be able. A landslide of uh, results. Well, you know, there is a fund in the Treasury Department, a voluntary fund where people can contribute to helping to pay off the national debt. Of course, that can't really take place until we once get this deficit. <laughs> Spending you need some kind of recognition. Of, uh, yeah, yeah some and then they, would need, they could I think do transfer it. all of that to that fund. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a little, a little questioning about it mentioning Social Security too much. <laughs> <laughs> they hung me out to dry. <laughs> Wasn't that show Congress something, though? Yes. Wasn't that show them how many people out there really yeah. want to do that? Yeah. That would really show those welfare voters over there. It, ought to, it ought to start from out there. I think maybe I should talk to a few people and see if they would start <laughs> Rather than looking like the government requesting it. Yes, sir. Well, oh, I forget. Well, this Pleased to see you on the view, and congratulations to you. And thank you for all my, my gifts. Well, well, thank you very much for having me. Great pleasure. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks again, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. See you in another year. Good luck to you, Stan. Thank you.
condition, and I look forward to doing it in the future.